good day and welcome to another edition of the big interview on football made in ghana tv my name is sheikh topic sienu and with me here this afternoon is our mercurial midfielder for the black stars mubarak wakasu good afternoon wakasu good afternoon i believe you are fine inshallah by his grace going? everything is okay first of all how does it feel when um, you have to come home, meet the family, and uh, play for the Blasters. You know, as I said uh, last week, it's always nice to nice to be in front of our people to show them what we have and what we can do for the nation. So I think we are we always feel happy to be to be back home. Let's first of all look at your performance at club level before we come to the national team. This season appears to be one of the best seasons for you personally and Deportivo Alaves as a club. Feet on the La Liga table. Um, how does it feel to be at that position at this point in the La Liga? You know, uh, what, I, what I can say is it's all about uh, hard working. And what I can remember in this in this part is our even our coach always says it to us we are in a position nobody thought we could be it's all about what we have been doing and what we are trying to do i think um, the whole team or the whole club we are trying to to make a history that has never happened in the in alaves and i think we are doing it step by step and i hope we keep on doing it i think it's been over a decade that um Deportivo alaves uh, found themselves in european competition uh, the europa league or the champions league but looking at your position on the table is a target to pick a ticket for europe this season okay um the honest thing in this um particular question is we were not targeting to be in europa league our main our main uh, focus was to be to remain to keep our our category in, uh, in the league not to go down but as we started the way we started we could see that we can do more than more than our expectation so and with our hard working and all those things like i said the coach said um, we have been in a position nobody thought uh, even we we never thought we can be in that position and we are there. So I think it's all about teamwork and, and everything. Real Madrid have obviously not been performing very well um, this season in the La Liga. You have been in Spain, you've played against Madrid, you've played against Barcelona, Atletico Madrid, you've played almost every big game. What do you think um, with your experience in the La Liga is the cause of Madrid's challenges in the La Liga this season? Okay, um, the little I can say about this is I think they did not start well and as a big club, if you don't start well, it, it, it costs you to come back. And the, as you can see, the matches that they, 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 they always defeat, it's a, it's a match that they normally take easy. They, they normally get the points easy. And everybody is talking about coach, like management, no. What, what, I've, what I know about Madrid is they always try to have a top player. And this year I don't think they have one of the top players in the world. So I think it's, it's affecting the you team. You think the absence of Cristiano Ronaldo has affected the team very well? Well, I can say yes, because things are not going well. So when things, when he was there, things were impact. It was going every, like the way they wanted. But since he's not around, it's like things are not going the way. So everybody is saying it and I think it's true. Kevin Prince Boateng is, is, is finally um, in, in in Spain again, now this time around he's playing for Barcelona. Was his move something that came to you as a surprise? I wasn't surprised about it because 
as you can see prince have the quality the ability he determines to to have everything in football and for the past two years prince have been a different player like he have been back to his normal his normal form like we we knew him back in AC Milan so I wasn't surprised about it but when I spoke to him about the move he said bro it's like my dream is coming true and it's true everyone dreams to play Barcelona Madrid Chelsea and the other big clubs mm. so he had it you know he said it's like my dream is coming true and I, I said to him it's not like you are you are in so I think it was a great move for him. Finally, on Kevin, um, we all know that after the 2014 World Cup in Brazil, there were issues about Kevin and Sule Muntari. Uh, Sule Muntari has come out to apologize to Ghanaians and the coach. Kevin is yet to apologize. Do you think that with his current performance, if he should come out to apologize, he will be needed in the team for the AFCON? Yeah, to be honest, um, for me, he have to because we need such players in the team. We need experienced players. We need such quality, determination and everything. Well, like we need him. That one, I cannot say no. So he have to do it. Twenty seventeen seemed to be a golden year for Ghana. Right from the beginning of the qualifiers, every player's target was we need to win the AFCON. After we missed out in 2015 to Cote d'Ivoire on penalties, and we couldn't win it. We ended in fourth position. I know obviously the target again is to win in 2019. Having missed out in 2015, 2017, does it put you, the players, under pressure to win it in 2019? Um, automatically we have to be under pressure because for the past three AFCONs I've been, we always get to semi-finals, we get to final and we yet not to make it. And all the time when we are going, we, we have it in mind that we are going for the trophy. And We've never come back with the trophy. So, I think, as a player, I think we need to sit down and put this in order before we move to this, this particular tournament. And I, and I can see that things are changing to be the way it has to be before we move to the AFCON. What are some of those things that you think must change and are changing now? You know, we the players, we can do our, we can do anything that we can do to help the nation mm -hmm. or to help ourselves because when we get the trophy, automatically it goes to we, our family, our fans and everyone in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So there's no way that we will get into the fold with kind of attitude that we don't want to play. And I've never seen some in my life before that a player will get into a fold acting like he doesn't play but what i think what i think we have here the problem we have here is is how we will manage ourselves outside the pitch before we get into the pitch 2015 um we 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 struggled in the group stage the final pass that you gave to jan gave us the go against Algeria and we qualified and that was the impetus to get us to the finals. Would you say 2015 was your best AFCON in your career as a player? It can be one of the best um, tournament I've been with um, in Ghana but I think South Africa was my best um, AFCON. I think I had my first AFCON 2013 in Africa. 2013 was your best? I think. But just that, um, the 2015, we, we got to finals. That's the difference. 
your your playmates um, you played with him in the la liga uh, you played with him in the black stars he's now in china uh emmanuel Boat. he moved recently when he was about to move a lot of comments came social media everywhere people were saying emmanuel is too young he should wait and play in the la liga for some time before moving to china do you share the same opinion and what's your view about the move from the La Liga to the Chinese Premier uh, Okay, you see I'm laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, um, when you are a player like this, it's always hard to take said decision. Because whenever you are doing something, you are thinking of the future. Okay, and when we talk about future, Future means that the, the word under the future means no one knows what will happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it was something, I can say it was an opportunity for him to get that chance. And I think he knows himself better than any other. Even if I tell you what I think, he may not think so. And he's the one being into it. So I think he's idea or his final idea that he took to China, I support him because he knows what he's been like, he has been through and what he's going on. He's quoted to have said that before the move, uh, the skipper of the Black Stars, Jan, advised him to quickly take it because it's a big opportunity for him. Um, do you think it was the best for advice? Maybe Asamoah has his own point of view. Sure. That's why he asked him to go. May I have my own point of view? Because it two things involved here. One is about money. And by when we talk about football, he's supposed to be in Spain. And when it's about money, he, he, he has to, to move China. to China. And we are all working for money. So I will not advise him to stay. When the money comes. When the money comes. If it wasn't a good money, I would have advised him to stay in Spain. So the bigger ones come. I also do, I do get chances to go to China, but I'm not interested for now. That is why I said we are not the same and we don't think the same and we are in different different But is it is it, is it possible that one day you may go to China? I, I've never dreamed of playing in China. That one, I will never lie, but I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Mm. That one, I will not lie to you. Before before the Black Stars played the friendly against Japan in, in, in Yokohama, where Ghana won two goals to zero, there were so many issues, and a lot of people accused Mubarak Wakasu for boycotting the game. This is a nice opportunity for you to clear the air. Was it true that you told the players not to go and play the game? And was it true that you boycotted? Okay, the truth behind this issue is I want to cut everything short because I'm a player and when, when I'm with my mates, we work as a teammate. So there's no way I'll go behind my mates and there's no way I'll allow my mates to go behind me because I always protect myself and protect the team or I protect the team and protect myself. It was a fasting time and when I had a call up, I told coach, uh, we, are, we are doing fasting. So I'm not sure if I'm 100% okay to travel with the team. But I'll try my possible best to come and join the team and see my strength. And by then, he knew that I was out during our last game, I had a problem before I came. Yeah. So true, it wasn't it wasn't the problem I had before I came, but everything was depending on the fasting. But when I came, I explained everything to him and he understood and even later i decided to join the team and he told me don't worry you relax the boys are there to do everything so i was with them i was chatting with them always I was listening to the news going on here 
but the work we are doing, when everything comes, we have to take it. Either good or bad, we have to take it. Now, let's quickly look at this. Apart from Ghana, I know obviously it's your target to be the Afghan, but which other country do you think that if Ghana are unable to get to the final and win the Afghan, are capable or is capable of winning the Afghan? It's a difficult question, but getting to performances, I think Egypt is one, Senegal and Morocco. So you tip Egypt, Senegal and Morocco. Yeah. So obviously, um, the, the, the semi-finalists are the teams that you have mentioned. For well, Ghana will be there, Egypt will be there, Senegal and Morocco. Yeah. And then Ghana will win it. We will beat all of them, inshallah. <laughs> the results against Kenya on Saturday, which is tomorrow, it's it's inconsequential to the qualification we have already qualified. But how do you think you, the players, should be approaching the game? Um, the result doesn't matter that most, but how is it going to be? Um, as you know, we Ghanaian players, we don't even know what do we what do we what do we call it? Uh, gather to gather. <laughs> We don't know anything. Every game is Every a game. Every game is a game for us. And this is a game to demonstrate what we can do in the AFCON. So we are well prepared for this game and we are going to give out our 100% show for the nation tomorrow. The skipper of the side, uh, Jan, is not around. We, we are very sure that Andre is capable of leading the team to do everything. But do you think the absence of Jan will, will, will affect the team in a way? Um, I think it will affect the team in some way, but not in the other way. Because, um, you know, when he's around, he makes us feel that we are home. He cracks jokes for us to, like, to feel that we are in, we are in the same place. Yeah. But, you know, football, when, when we get into the pitch, when there's no... When there's no player, there's other to replace. Even when I'm not there, when I was not around, there were players winning games for for the nation. So it's the same way that if he's not there, we have a way of missing him. But in the other way, we can do it and do it better for him. Finally, um, on the issues of the Black Stars, you had a meeting with the new management committee of the Black Stars yesterday at the training grounds. You met them for the first time, led by Dr. Keke Sapo. He's worked with Kumata Santikotoko at a point in time. But I, I think you, you, you met him for the first time in your football career yesterday. After the meeting, uh, what impression did you get about the committee and what assurance did they give you? The, uh, the way they gave us was super because the, it, the meaning of the words they gave, they, they gave to us yesterday shows that they will always be behind us till the end. So, they, what I know is, this is not the first time we've heard this kind of words, but I'm just pleading on behalf of my colleagues and everyone here. I know that they will do it, but like we said, even yesterday, the captain said it to them that we really thank them for being behind us since day one, and we still want them behind us. So I'm just pleading on them to be behind us, as they are saying, and we we'll also try our best to do what they also want. If you are just connecting, this is Football Made in Ghana TV for you, and with me here this afternoon is one of Ghana's best midfielders ever in the history of the Black Stars, Mubarak Wakasu. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll cut a very controversial area. A lot of players don't want to talk about the Anas Exposé. Stay connected. We are back shortly. Now, um, finally, let's look at... Uh, the Anas Exposé. You are a Ghanaian player, a Ghanaian footballer. You started your career here in Ghana. You played for an academy. You know, you moved up, up, up to the Black Stars level. You've seen it all when it comes to local football. For nine months, 
<laughs> There's not been football in Ghana as a result of the expose. Will you say the expose has been negative or positive for Ghana? Okay, I'll be straight to the point. I will not talk about the expose, but what I know as a as a professional footballer, I do care about the 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 the, the league, the Ghanaian league. Why? Because sometimes, maybe when I play Saturday, Sunday, I use my time to watch Ghana League. Mm. But I'm not seeing it these days. And for me, as a player, I have to fight for my fellow players. If I'm not here, it doesn't mean that I should not support the ones here. Mm. Because it's impossible to be, to be a professional player without playing a league good nine months. For me, it doesn't sound good. Just recently, uh, when Kotoko lost against this... Um, yes, um, uh, Sesco United yeah, in Zambia. Everybody was talking negative about them. But did anyone sat down to ask himself, why is it happening this way? Me, I'll give credit to the boys, because without like nine months, and you could win some of your group stages although they were even it was like a final to them if they win they will they will stay mm. they, will, they will continue playing of course but they did not get it which is part of football but mm. when you watch the other side they were not in a good shape because without league you can never be better mm. as you can see we are here when we came here the training we are doing is different from the training we will be doing when we are not playing league. But since we came, it's just a short time training because we, we are already fit. Okay. So it's different from when you are not playing. So for me, I don't think that thing helps Ghana football. I won't, I won't lie to you. Talking about the Kotoko game, um, you got their preparations. Um, Kotsiki Akono was a new coach to the side. He spent just four or five months with the team. Uh, he was appointed in October. He was able to take the team to the group stage of the competition. They won some matches, you know, to get there, including going away to beat Cotton Sport Garua in Cameroon. A lot of flack has been directed to him, and people are saying he should be sacked as the coach for unable to qualify the team to the next state of the competition. Do you agree with them? No, I don't. Why? Because I have uh, evidence. Because I Black Star played against Kotoko. And the way I saw Kotoko's team was like a team from Europe, well organized, moving the ball, well positioned. Like, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that from any Ghanaian team, but I saw that that day. And you know, football is sometimes we, we call it it's it's a lack. When you have luck on your side, whatever you do, it comes. So me I don't agree of sacking him because he's a good coach. On my point of view or what I saw in the Kotokos team, he doesn't deserve that. Well, um, you've heard him. You may think that he's not following the Ghanaian league or Ghana football locally. But Mubarak Wakasu has been following the Ghanaian league. And for that matter, in the absence of the league, he knows whatever is going on. He followed Kumasi Asante Kotoko throughout the Confederations Cup campaign. And he thinks that Siki Akono is a coach the club must strive to keep because he's a good coach sure. it's been nice speaking to you um it's not rare to come up with such an opportunity to speak to a wonderful player like you we are very grateful and Shake. thank you for your there time there is nothing behind us we are all human so we are always there for you guys thank you very much thanks you are enjoying football made in ghana tv we had an interview with mubarak wakasu plays for deportivo alaves and I want you to announce for the Black Stars of Ghana. Stay connected.
as we bring you more explosive interviews on Football Medica. I'll give you Bye. next. Bye.